During the investigation, a young man was interviewed about the case on live TV. He told a reporter that whoever kidnapped the boy deserved to be executed. It was soon discovered that he had been the kidnapper. Hi, my name is Sonny, and you might recognize my voice from TikTok. Now I've decided to do some true crime stories because many of you love hearing my voice. So here we are. Now, this is a very disturbing case, so discretion is advised. On January 30th, 1976, in Troyes, about 12.30, Patrick Henry, 22, kidnapped seven-year-old Felipe Bertrand when he was leaving school. Very soon, he requested a ransom of one million French francs from the child's parents. Gerald and Marie Francois. He then soon strangled the boy, but did not mention this and continued to expect the payment. The kidnapping had provoked considerable emotion in France, where television allowed the public to follow the parents' anguish and their repeated calls to the kidnappers during the 18-day police inquiry. Patrick Henry was detained by the police for 47 hours. The legal limit was 48 hours before formally putting Henry under criminal investigation. After being released, he made multiple media appearances in which he claimed he had nothing to do with the kidnapping and he wished the kidnappers would be given the death penalty. He was arrested again on the 17th of February 1976 and the child's dead body was discovered hidden under the bed of a room that he rented. The murder outraged the public even more so after learning that prior to his arrest, Henry had talked about the kidnapping on live television and said that the perpetrator deserved to be executed. Many in the public started demanding that Henry be executed. I'm not surprised. Some wanted him tortured. Others wanted Henry strangled with the same weapon he used to kill the boy. The guillotine was still legal at the time, but at this point, most juries in France were only willing to sentence child murderers to death. And Henry seemed like a worthy candidate. No attorney in Troyes would uh, want to be his defense counsel and the head of the bar of Troyes found his duty to volunteer for the task. Eventually, he contacted Robert Badinter, a passionate opponent of capital punishment, who'd previously lost two clients to the guillotine, and he agreed to take the job. Now, this lawyer received a lot of hate mail to his uh, home address, and at one point, a homemade bomb was planted and detonated at his door, and nobody was hurt. Now, among the public, there was almost no doubt that Henry would be executed. But instead of explaining why his client deserved to live, Badinter chose to put the guillotine itself on trial. Uh, he carefully explained that the components of a guillotine and procedures of an execution are by guillotine, and if Henry was sentenced to die, the young man would be strapped to a board pushed down onto the guillotine's platform and then cut in two. Uh, Badinta asked the jurors if they would be willing to tell their children that they sent a young man to his death. Finally, he said that if they believed in capital punishment, then they send Henry, a man who'd committed a horrendous crime and whose guilt was in no doubt to the guillotine death. But if they were not believers, he told them that now was the time to say no. And in his own words, if you decide to kill Patrick Henry, it is each of you that I will see in the early morning at dawn. And said, and I would say to myself, it was you and you alone who decided. On January 18th, 1977, the jury came to its decision. When France still used the guillotine, it took eight votes out of 12 by a jury for a convict to be sentenced to die. Henry's life would be spared by a single vote. After the trial, at least three members of the jury claimed to have voted against the death out of a Catholic conviction. 
The parents of the child also said that they didn't want Henry to be executed. It's very generous. And much to Henry's surprise, he learned that he wouldn't be executed. And he quietly thanked the jurors and told them that they would not regret their decision. Only two men were executed in France after Henry's conviction. Uh, Jerome Corrine, who attempted to rape and then killed an eight-year-old girl. And Hamida Jandubi, who raped, tortured and murdered a young woman. Henry would remain in prison for decades. And over time, things changed. France abolished capital punishment in 1981. And Henry, now 46, claimed to be a changed man. He obtained an advanced degree in mathematics and worked in the prison print shop. Um, so essentially, this guy, he got away with this. He Well, he didn't exactly get away with it, did he? He ended up in prison for the majority of his life. Um, he avoided death when the jurors could have voted for him to die and he would have been gone. So after spending a third of his life in prison, on the 15th of May, 2001, Henry was released on parole. Uh, and unfortunately, he would continue to bring controversy to himself. Controversy. Controversy. As soon as he was free, Henry contacted various publishers to offer them a book of memories. One of the publishers refused his offer, saying that Henry was motivated by money, not redemption. And in April 2002, while he was no longer physically recognisable since the time of his trial, Henry gave Paris Match an interview in which his face was completely uncovered. Uh, Henry was arrested for shoplifting in a large DIY store uh, in 2002 and fined 2,000 euros. Henry's book was finally accepted by Kalman Levy, and it was initially supposed to be titled You Won't Regret It. So the book was suspended because he was uh, arrested again in 2002 for carrying 10 kilos of marijuana in Spain. Uh, the Justice Minister, Dominique Perben, stressed that Henry's personal failure to seize his second chance must not be allowed to affect future decisions made under France's recently relaxed rules on releasing long-term prisoners conditional on their good behaviour. And after Henry's arrest, the book was published under a new title, Do You Regret It? And in 2003, Henry was convicted of drug trafficking. He received a four-year sentence and was fined 20,000 euros. In September 2017, Henry was granted parole for medical reasons. And on December the 3rd of 2017, he died of lung cancer at the age of 64. So there we have it. This guy was, uh, was allowed to live for all that time, even against France's uh, death penalty. So he avoided that. He avoided the death sentence, thanks to his, his lawyer. And, um, well, he lived a quite a long life then, in the end. What do you make of this story? Have you heard of this story before? And which other stories would you like me to read? Uh, let me know in the comments. I would really, really appreciate that. And again, you can find me on TikTok, Sonny Osan. It's nice and easy to uh, remember. Uh, I can catch you there. You can catch me here next time as well. Right, so until then, take it easy, guys. See you next time.